guys. Welcome to Classic Sitcoms Facts and Trivia. Appreciate you being here. Uh, before we get started, please subscribe. Thank you. Today's video is on nine tiny little things that you might have missed from MASH's pilot episode. You want to watch? Want to see? Want to hear about it? Huh? Should we? Okay. Let's do it. Okay, let's start with, hey, how about number one? We'll start with number one. Hawkeye has a mom. In later episodes, we learn a bit of Hawkeye's backstory. His mother died when he was 10 years old, and his dear old dad had been a bachelor ever since. However, in the pilot, Hawkeye mentions that Hojon can stay with his parents. So there's no problem there. Well, there's one problem. How does he have two parents? Uh, this wacky hat that... Uh, was worn by uh, B.J. Honeycutt, was in the pilot. It's hard to forget a hat like that. Uh, what with a black and white checkered pattern, pink ribbon, and poopy tassels, at the raffle party in the pilot, a random member of the 4077th debuts his fashionable headpiece. Of course, it would later become associated with B.J., who did not join MASH until season four. His hat is there at the bittersweet end when B.J. bids a goodbye farewell to his close friend Hawkeye. Uh, most cast members can't boast about being in the first episode and final episode. Uh, you can see a clear shot of Radar's left hand. Uh, Gary Berghoff hit his left hand well throughout most of the time on the series. The actor had three fingers shorter on that hand, and he was uh, born with Poland syndrome. It's most noticeable in the opening scene, an extended version of the credits, as he catches a football and hears approaching helicopters. <clears throat> it's the only episode with George Morgan as Father Mulcahy. Uh, first, this one episode, George Morgan portrayed Father Mulcahy. Oddly, he never speaks. Perhaps he's more of a monk in the pilot. That being said, Morgan can actually be seen in subsequent episodes. Take a close look at the opening credits in the later episodes in the shot where Hawkeye leads a crouched crew to the helicopter. Morgan's Mulcahy can be seen in the back of the pack just look real close. Uh, it is the only episode with a scene set in the United States. Of course, most of MASH takes place in Korea. However, there's a brief glimpse of a character in America uh, that is not from a home movie or photographed or whatnot. Uh, when General Hammond receives a phone call from Margaret, he flashes back to a romantic moment they shared in Fort Benning, uh, Georgia. Coincidentally, it also happens to be the only scene of the series which we see Margaret wearing a white nurse's uniform. Uh, the gin still changes after this first episode. The gin still is in is a key feature of the swamp throughout the series. Uh, it looks like a chemistry experiment with tubing, glass containers, and metal stands. In the pilot, it looks more like something from the hills outside of Mayberry. Uh, Frank Burns snatches up the still, which is a large copper tank. Uh, maybe he broke that one and they had to build a new one? Uh, Bruno Kirby appears in a silent role. Bruno Kirby from City Slickers, Good Morning Vietnam, and When Harry Met Sally, can be seen briefly waving when Hawkeye and his conspirators sedate Frank. Kirby, billed as B. Kirby Jr., speaks no lines of dialogue as Boone. Uh, Private Lorenzo Boone does turn up later in the show with a different, act, uh, with a different actor with lines. Robert Gooden uh, plays the part. You might remember... Uh, Bud Cork in the role in the 1970 film, too. Uh, perhaps Kirby was intended to play the larger part. He does not mention in the closing credits. There's a reference to a significant character from the movie and novel, Captain Walter Kosciuszko Waldo Waldowski, uh, might not ring a bell to most MASH fans. And they could barely ring a bell since I can't pronounce it very well. But the character made a key contribution to the franchise. In the 1970 movie MASH, John Shuck played the part, uh, Waldo Kowski, uh, nicknamed the Painless Pole, uh, contemplates suicide, hence the song Suicide is Painless, which became the theme song to the TV series. The Painless Pole never appears on the show, but Hawkeye mentions his name when reading out raffle entries. Again, this might have been a character intended for a larger role and subsequently dropped from the series. Okay, now, who in the heck is Nako? I mentioned two tiny characters that are notable. There's another one. 
In the closing credits, you can see a line for NACO, Laura Miller. If you are wondering who that is, you have good company. NACO was scripted a loved interest for Trapper, but her scenes were apparently trimmed from the final product. Captain Bridget NACO McCarthy was in the movie. The pilot script describes her as a 30-year-old attractive, no-nonsense -no nurse. This is uncertainly, uh, uncertainty as to which actress Laura Miller even is for the pilot. Likely she is a woman wearing a mask next to Trapper in the OR. Laura Miller never appeared in another episode and is challenging to even find an image. And there you go. Didn't know a lot of this stuff. I mean, I knew, I didn't know they showed Ray uh, Gary Barkoff's hand, but I didn't know that he was missing, I thought he was missing fingers. I didn't know, I realize they were just shorter. Um, some neat stuff. I hope you guys will share this stuff out because, um, like I say, it's neat and it's worthy of sharing with your friends because they deserve the very best. And hey, uh, am I not the best? Okay, forget that. Um, I just share with them anyway. Um, and I'm sure I'm going to hear something from my friend Lovell over this one as soon as he watches this. I'm going to hear from him, yeah. So, before you get started, Lovell, just... I'll take it all back. Have a great day. God bless you guys. I love you. And I'll be praying for you.